uh, attitudinal awareness and attitudinal change and, uh, and uh, disability awareness is actually an objective of every local authority. It's been set for us. Um, by, by the Department of Environment, Heritage and Local Government or whatever they're now called because their name changes as often as um, the, the weather does. Anyway, the point is that the, the, we are still entrusted with uh, trying to change and make uh, a, our communities aware about their responsibilities as good neighbours, as, uh, as good business people, as good educators, um, and, and uh, as good uh, citizens, uh, how they should be interacting with the other people in their community, their neighbours. Some of those neighbours will obviously be neighbours with disabilities. So um, we've been charged with the responsibility of raising that awareness. And how, how would we try and do that uh, was something that we we've, we've thought long and hard about uh, as a collective access officer network. Uh, to develop this long-term and cost-effective and a sustainable way to promote disability awareness in the community. It was a big ask and we wondered, you know, uh, in times of these austerities that has been mentioned loads of times today already, we were going to do a lot with, as in the Yorkshire expression, do a lot with nout. And that was, the, that was exactly what we were going to do. We were going to do, the objective was no budget whatsoever but to deliver disability awareness. So how uh, would we consider that? Um, at at the, the core of our initiative is the recognition that education and the educational environment are crucial support for assisting and understanding and even discussing and developing a sense of democracy um, and uh, targeting our students of 14 and 17. Um, and it, this educational environment could possibly provide um, a catalyst in creating this awareness pro process. So moving through that then we thought, how would we do that? Um, get involved in this education system because unlike in, uh, in England, um, local authorities are not an educational authority as well. Um, we're, we're simply, you know, local government and that's, that's the entire remit. However, we chose to have a look at ourselves more holistically as public servants uh, rather than as the local government. We looked at all of the resources that might be available to us, including our own access officer network, um, the National Disability Authority um, and its customizable e-learning module that it had available. Um, now that module was originally designed and developed to deliver um, equality disability training to public servants and end of. So if we imagine that there's 300,000 public servants, there would come a time when we'd switch off the e-learning program once that 300,000th person had access to the, uh, the system, we could switch it off. So we said, well, that would be a waste of a resource. So let's hold that for a moment. And then we said, there's a transition year program where they're continually trying to develop uh, new ways of uh, engaging these 14 to 17 year old uh, students um, and how we might be able to engage with them in what we probably uh, in the age profile would traditionally have known as civics. You know, that, that whole idea of citizenship and responsibility and uh, care in your community. So we said, how could we actually build that into the transition year program? And then we said, well, the senior management <coughs> liked our idea that we were going to do something with NOUT. And, and, and that was the whole process that we said, right, let's start talking on the basis of us achieving our corporate social responsibility of educating and using the resources, identify the NDA as a, a tool that they have available, and then start to work with um, our educators and say, we have a system that we think you might be attracted to. So with that in mind then, we developed a project team, as you do. <laughs> you know, and um, we said we want to keep the project team small, but that everybody on the, on the project team would have something to offer. You know, that there was, you know, that there was a reason why they were on the team. Um, for myself as access officer leading the, leading the local authority part, Shane Hogan, who isn't here but was leading the NDA part, 
um, there was somebody from the Department of Education leading the Department of Education's uh, contribution in, in liaising with the transition year coordinators. And then we actually, at a late stage, developed a relationship with the Special Olympics Ireland because they saw this as a very useful mechanism for them to both engage their uh, volunteering uh, for, for any time when there's sports coming on, and they also saw it as a way of engaging their own Special Olympians that might want to sit in on the transition year projects themselves. So there was, there was a lot of integration there. So, and then we chose to produce a briefing document. Yeah, I, and I, silly me, I forgot to bring it this, this afternoon, but it was a, 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 just a nice, succinct document that was outlining how the project was going to roll out and that you know, it answered the, the FAQs, or the frequent, frequently asked questions. You know, it just gave a, a very nice, succinct way of putting all, all the program together. So, um, and we then presented this proposal to um, a, a conference like this, except it was for transition year uh, coordinators in Athlone. So we presented that at the beginning, uh, at the end of uh, the school term last year, so in April of 2000 and uh, 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 April of 2012, just this year, so that they were ready, briefed to be able to install it into their transition year program starting in September of this year, um, and they jumped at it basically because what we were offering them was 90 minutes of teaching or training that was not going to be delivered by them. It was going to be delivered online by the students sitting at computers, uh, watching videos and answering questions in, a, in a, an interactive way that kids absolutely love. It's just, you know, um, it's just the thing that the way that the environment in which they now operate, if it's on a laptop or on a PC, it must be cool. Um, so the element one of the project then, to, to, to describe it to you, uh, the students interact uh, uh, in the Bespoke National Disability Authority's e-learning module, the module that we referred to a few moments ago, that has been tweaked a little bit just to give it a little bit of a trendy look for, for the students. And it gives them a welcome page because they can see that this is bespoke to them now, tweaked and modified so that they feel it's their, their e-learning module. And they log on and they, and they go through the case studies um, answer a few questions as they're moving along through the, through the program, and they get a little certificate at the end to, to indicate that they have completed the, the, the program. So most schools are choosing to hold that little certificate back from the student and then plan to give them, it, give them to the student at the end of their transition year as part of a prize giving process. So it's just a, just a little acknowledgement as part of their whole student project. Um, so, and then, as I say, along, as they're going through the program, there's checkpoints um, at just making sure that they understand what they've learned through, through the process. And then, um, as I say, the rationale for this is also as part of the transition year students' project, they normally go through a work experience element, which they'll be hived off to, to uh, companies, retail outlets, offices, factories uh, around, around uh, their, their local communities. So when they go, they're already got a little bit more training than uh, the traditional employer would expect them to have because they now know how to interact with a person with a disability, either as a customer or as a, as a colleague that they might have to meet on a daily basis. So it, it, from that point of view, it was a, a, a very positive and proactive approach again. So the second element of this was, you know, we weren't in this uh, for the goodness of our heart. We wanted to get a little bit of something back. Um, and the second element that we wanted to get was to get a piece of visual Im imagery um, from the students that could reflect the learning that they've had during the course of their attending this part of the, uh, of the, of the course. The idea being that we would develop uh, a poster that would become uh, an awareness raising poster that we would use during 2013. Because what had happened to, previous to this was that each local authority had gone about investing or, or um, 
assigning somebody to develop a poster um, on an awareness raising issue um, ad hocly, you know, and independently of each other. So there was a, a degree of inconsistency across the country about what, what it was we were raising or the message that we were trying to, to transmit. So this way we got, we got a consistency of approach and we have a free poster because what is going to happen is uh, the students will develop a poster um, independently of each other and we, they'll have a competition in their local school. One poster from that school is then submitted into a county-wide competition so they have a competition at county level, and one poster from that county then goes into a national competition. So ultimately, we end up with one winner out of 26 uh, counties. We end up with one winner of, a, of a, the poster competition, which <coughs> then becomes our national, our national uh, poster for 2013. And the idea is we'll repeat the whole thing again the following year, so each year we'll get a suite, of, a suite of posters that you'll see on billboards, on road signs, in shop windows, and it'll, on buses and all sorts of things, but the, the cost will be the placement of the advert, not the design of it. That's the important thing. And the, the expandable part of this is that it creates a buzz. It gets the kids talking amongst themselves and with their parents and with their teachers, and it just, it just brings the disability awareness agenda into natural conversation in the schoolyard and, in, and on Facebook even. I've already seen a few treads going around on Facebook on this line. So this transformational learning and the outcomes that we have is that it's a tra I've just alluded to it, this transfer transformational learning quality is that it engages the, the, ch the students in new ways, uh, both in conversation with, with their peers, with their parents, and with their educators, because the educators are actually saying, oh, I didn't realize there was so much about this disability stuff, you know, and uh, it's, it's, just, it's just raised the game for everybody concerned. And then the transition lear year learning activities underpin, as we said already, the civic duty involving community in the voluntary sector. So it, it, it gives the students an opportunity, mm, maybe I should volunteer for Enable Ireland or for NCBI, or whoever, and you know, there's, there's always ranges of, of people looking for volunteers. So it, it pushes, it pushes the, the envelope out a little bit more in terms of not just understanding the awareness, but how can I actually contribute. So it, the module supports the personal and social, vocational and educational development and prepares them for their role as autonomous and participative, and that's the key thing, uh, the participation that we're trying to encourage in, in their communities. Um, so the spin-offs, as we see it from the program, i um, just nearly finished, Seamus, am I still okay for time? Um, is the establishment uh, of a, a collaboration ethos. This is something that when we were chatting about this presentation, and we wanted to make sure that this message w was was passed on. The collaboration part was was critical, um, and uh, somebody mentioned about it this morning about the implementation process. That we're not so good at implementing. We're great at planning, and we're great at assessing, and we're not good at implementing. This is a full-on implementation program at nout cost, and uh, and and at massive impact. We already have nearly 700 students have gone through this since the 1st of September when the schools went back. 700 students, and then we multiply that by their parents that are probably engaged in the conversation, multiplied by the teachers that have delivered it. This is a significant metric, but the most important is the collaboration that's gone on between the local authorities, the Department of Education, and uh, the, 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 the service providers. You know, that uh, it's a new way of doing business that we hadn't previously considered. And in terms of value for money, well, when you're getting 700 students going through a program for now, it's pretty good value. So um, it's efficient and it's a, an effective utilization of resources. I don't think any of us can deny that. But it's sustainable. It can go on and on and on and with, without much impact or delivery from our point of view. So finally, 
Uh, this is the last slide, I promise. <laughs> um, the consistency with the public service reform plan, it speaks, it speaks for itself in, in, in what it does. Um, it's placing the customer service at the core of everything we do. How more can we do that than teach our young uh, people on how they should be interacting with people with disabilities, whether as peers, teachers, colleagues, uh, customers, it's, it's at the core uh, of the project. Maximizing new and, inno and innovative service delivery channels. Well, you know, we're right up there at cutting edge. This is online learning, so, you know, if this is, this is good as it gets with using technology at the moment. Um, radically reducing our costs to drive better value for money. Well, as I say, if you can get better value for money than no cost, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be very interested to see it. And then leading and organizing and working in new ways. That's the collaboration part that we're talking about. We now know that we can collaborate. We have now established a way to collaborate. And what we want to do is share that learning and that way of collaboration with you, our colleagues. And then a strong focus on implementation and delivery. As I say, the metric speaks for itself already. Um, and we're excited that it's, as I say, it can only go, go on and on. And um, we thank you for your, for your interest in it. That's it. Thank you.